Romans 12, 1-9, Transformation and the New Birth. I exhort you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies a living. Sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, this is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your spirit. That you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, what pleases Him, and what is perfect. By virtue of the grace that has been given me, I commend to each and every one, do. Not make of yourselves an opinion more than is fitting, but a reasonably modest. Concept, according to the degree of faith that God has distributed to you. For as in one body we have many members, and each of our members has a different function. So we, though many, form one body in Christ, and each of us is a member of one another. We have different gifts, according to the grace that has been bestowed upon us. Let him who has the gift of prophecy exercise it according to faith. He who is called to the ministry, dedicate himself to the ministry. If you have the gift of teaching, that you teach. Or the gift of exhorting, exhorting. He who distributes alms, do it with simplicity. He that presides, presides with zeal. He who exercises mercy, let him do it with affability. May your charity. Romans 12, 1-9 Dear brothers in Christ, it is with great joy that we are studying the Word of God. Together with you, in the presence of the Creator of heaven and earth, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The great difference that is made when we are in natural body only, and that we live. Only what we witness, and which is part of the daily life of our life, we only believe in. Obvious things, in which we can verify them, verify the truth of things, through of real facts, to quantify things through numbers, to use numerical signs to draw directions, and to prove results, and to make statistics, but there is a different life. Superior to all this, which is the spiritual life, and which are other metrics used to guide oneself spiritually and also have spiritual results. And also to prove supernatural facts that is only possible when we do it spiritually, and when we are part of the body of Christ. And when we are members of the body of Christ, and that we receive spiritual gifts to develop efficiently, what is designated to us by the Spirit of God. And as we fulfill God's design, let us then be a member of the body that works well, and that produces enough for the body to be well developed. Our study today is based on Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. In the first verse, Paul begs God to have compassion on those who are a part of the body of Christ, because they must present their own natural bodies in a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. What does Paul mean by the sacrifice alive, holy and pleasant? That is to say, that those who resolve to be a physical body, and at the same time a spiritual body, being part of the body of Christ, has to present a differential. It can not be spiritual, it is only carnal. And for the carnal to become spiritual, the need for a certain effort, dedication, knowledge, understanding. We have to understand so well the spiritual that we have to annul in the material body. The practices of this world, and this way of nullifying the practices of the world is that. Paul speaks of becoming a living sacrifice, that is, we are alive, but we do not part. Of the practices of this world, of corruption, avarice, envy, of wanting evil for another, eliminating the lie. These things of the world that cause suffering to those who practice them, and much more to those who are harmed. This is so important, that Paul in verse 2, directs us how to get out of these things, do not conform with this world. When Paul expresses himself in this way, he means that we should not partake of the things of this world, and be as comfortably as if nothing were happening, as if these mundane practices were normal because it is not normal for the saints, but for those in the world, to act according to the things of the world, it becomes a necessity to live with these dishonest practices, and we do it with great efficiency so that we may be victorious here in this world, for this, we must make others suffer, and weep for the suffering we cause to them. Continuing in verse 2, Paul says that we must transform ourselves, we must go through a renewal of our understanding, so that we may understand what is the good, the pleasant, and the perfect will of God. 
Paul asks us to renew ourselves in our understanding, because in order to understand the will of God, we have a different understanding of things, because for the world we have to act with cleverness, even with cruelty, but to do God's will, we must have a modified consciousness, 